The kid was expected to be fast, but inconsistent. Instead, consistency powered him to a win last week. Joel Hetrick is going to win the overall with a pair of second place finishes. Joel Hetrick wants another next. Welcome to Sunset Ridge Motocross here in Walnut, Illinois. Jason Wigan, of course, your host for Racer TV's continuing coverage of the AMA Pro ATV Motocross Championship. This is the ITP Tires Sunset Ridge National. The sun is actually not set on the track. We've got perfect conditions for racing today and the fastest four-wheeled motocross riders in the world ready to do battle. Everyone gunning for the big 44 of Chad Weenan, who's won two of the first three races this year. The Yamaha man leads the points. Fellow Yamaha rider Thomas Brown has had a pretty solid season going so far. And there are a bunch of privateer teams that would like to factor into this, not only on the pro side, but we run a variety of amateur classes out here as well. This is the place to come get noticed and discovered and try to make a living as a professional. A lot of buzz over at the MotoWorks Can-Am tent which not only houses defending series champion John Natale, but also the new kid, Joel Hetrick. Let's talk to him. Oh, I started racing when I was about four or five. Just I carried over from my dad. He raced, and uh, it's just something our whole family did for our, ever. And I uh, just went through the ranks all the, every year, nationals, and I've been here doing nationals for, I, I can't even tell you how long. But uh, it's a great series, and you know, I just made my way through the ranks, and now I'm pro, second year pro class, and uh, doing awesome. Yeah, my mom and dad, uh, they've sponsored me my whole life and uh, give me everything. Now that I'm on Can Am, they, they do their vending here at the track and uh, they're still in it and helping everyone out, doing their amateur team and just helping my Pro Am friends out with getting their stuff ready and uh, just still in it. It's a, it's a big change for us to be on this team and whatnot, but my dad still helped me 100% and we still get the bike where we want it. and. Uh, Darren and the whole team, they do whatever whatever's possible to help the bike. My mom, she does everything still. Uh, makes me food, I mean, gets my gear out. There's no change there. She's, if she needs something to work on the bike, she'd work on the bike. I mean, she's a, there 100%. Last year, I got second overall here. It was my first podium my rookie year. And I'd like to get podium here again. And I'm uh, real, feeling really confident with the first time qualifier position. And uh, I've been practicing hole shots, so I'm definitely going to be out front on the hole shot and just hopefully I can stay on for 25. Hedrick so far this year with eighth, third, and first place spots in the first three rounds. So he's definitely on a steady climb toward the top. And you cannot count out John Natale. There's Hedrick there. And then Natale, the Ironman, won the last moto of the season a couple weeks ago in Maryland, but he did not get the overall. These guys are all trying to find the magic combination to knock off Chad Weenan. But Weenan right there has another advantage today. He is an Illinois native, so he'll have a lot of people pulling for him out here, and he'll be very comfortable on the walnut soil here at Sunset Ridge MX and the ITP Tires National. Let's go racing. Battling for the whole shot here in turn one. SSI decal is going to hand out some money, and the battle is on. Your leader, 708, the Bumblebee, Harold Goodman. And he's got Lone Star's Nick Denoble here on the red Honda on the inside. And they're going to go at it. Looks like that's Weenan up to third. But look at the leaders. Denoble going to take it away. Oh, and we've got a bump and grind situation here in the first turn. And it doesn't look like Joe Bird or Thomas Brown are happy about that. They have been left in the ditch while everyone else is getting away. See a nice sandy soil laid down here in Illinois, and this track is going to get very, very rough. And right now, handling it best is Denoble, and it looks like Weenan has gotten around Goodman and is up to the number two spot. Look at the berms that have built up around the outside of these corners. This is going to be fun to watch. And look at Denoble flying so far, even opening up a little bit of a gap here early. And that's your series points leader, 
Weenan behind him. Weenan trying an outside line, get a little bit of drive over this tabletop. And he does close in a bit there, a little bit better line selection, and that will be so key in this sandy soil. This track's gonna get rough, and it looks like Weenan starting to close in, and the whoop section has always been to the big man out of Illinois' advantage. Really put himself on the map. Called him wide open Weenan back in those days, and he's wide open right now, closing up onto Noble for the number one spot. Third is gonna be Hedrick now with Josh Upperman and Natali rounding out the top five, but the threesome up front starting to break away. And I think the 88 of Hetrick could be the fastest rider of this group. He is now close to the rear tires of Wien, and then Wienan's got to try to figure out a way to get around DeNoble without opening the door. And he's just found it. He's going to go around the outside. Can he take the lead? It'll put him on the inside the next corner. DeNoble trying to come back. Stay with us. Racer TV is brought to you by Can-Am and by Amsoil. Welcome back to NBC Sports Network's coverage. Racer TV and the 2012 AMA ATV Motocross Championship. We had a battle for the lead until we went to break. Chad Wienan has now got that number one spot from Nick DeNoble. And the rider in second, Joel Hetrick, is trying to keep Wienan honest. Now a bit of a showdown brewing here. Wienan had won the first two races in this series. Then at round three, he ran into a problem at the last moto of the day. And Hetrick was able to take advantage of that and get it. Now it could be a straight up fight for the win. Looks like Josh Upperman and John Natale battling for third and fourth. We have lost Nick DeNoble, who was your early leader, from this group. And in fact, now we hear that DeNoble is out of this race with problems. So unfortunately, hero to zero as far as the points are concerned. If you're winning, you do not care about that. You want to just win motos and try to demoralize the competition. He knows that Hetrick wants to beat him straight up. He wants to prove he can do it on pure speed. And when you get to long, rough loop sections like that, it is hard to keep winning honest. And that's the task that Hetrick has been saddled with so far. They're doing a good job, though. They've gotten away from Upperman and from Natali. And you can see a lot of these riders running the pink livery. It's a pink race here, going to raise some awareness and funds, uh, of course, for breast cancer. And uh, Weenan, ah, real men wear pink. He and the rest of the riders, they don't care what the thing looks like. They just want to ride it as fast as they can. And he has done a phenomenal job here now getting away from Hetrick. And Weenan, we talked about it quite a bit so far this year. He has gotten off the strong starts in this championship before. But each time he has had something pull it from his grasp. Last year was a major injury that a lot of people did not think he could come back from. A broken back started his own team here, Wien in Motorsports Yamaha. And with help from Walsh Racecraft, they have obviously put together a first-rate program. Hetrick running strong, but not able to maintain the pace. And Natalie is back in third. But the Ironman's got to be a little bit concerned over Wien and picking up more points and more moto wins. Now again, consistency will always win out in the championship you got to at least fight for those wins when the opportunity is there. This time around, Natale didn't get the start he wanted. He didn't put himself in position to challenge the 44. And I'll tell you, it is a thing of beauty to watch when Chad Wien is able to get out front like this. He throws that thing around. As we said, he's very fast through the uh, rough stuff. And when you give him a lead, as uh, Usain Bolt likes to say, no one is going to run past him. These guys got to try to beat him off the start and see if they can make it work there. Natalie was able to challenge him, for example, at the opener when he started in front of him. And remember, we run two motos in ATV Pro Motocross. We're on the last lap here at Moto One, but these guys will have the opportunity to turn the trick on Wienan in the second one. The fans here don't want to see it that way, though. This is an Illinois native, and they have seen him come so close to this title so many times, and they're hoping this is the year where it happens, and it could be launched by this great first moto effort here in front of his home state fans. Chad Weenan just wheeling away. Hedrick and Natali are going to have to hope to come back in moto number two. Fourth in the moto is Upperman on the Baldwin Motorsports machine with Goodman, who was up front earlier in a solid fifth. Checkered flag is out. Moto one goes to Chad Weenan, and you hear the crowd support behind him. They want to see the home state boy take an overall win today. He'll have to follow it up with Moto2. 
you can bet that the MotorWorks Can-Am duo of Hetrick and Natale will be back with a vengeance in that one. Natale did not get the start, saving his energy here as he cruises across the line in third. Watch for him to do some damage in moto number two. Hetrick has proven to be very consistent early in his professional career. Will that consistency pay off with another overall win? Find out when we come back. Racer TV is brought to you by Can-Am and by Amsoil. Welcome back to Walnut, Illinois and the ITP Tire Sunset Ridge National. Earlier in the show, we mentioned that a lot of the machines and riders are running pink gear, numbers, graphics, decals. Well, that's because we're raising funds and awareness for the Susan G. Komen Foundation here in the Quad Cities area. And that includes the second annual track walk where uh, fans actually get to go out there and walk the track and see exactly the type of terrain these riders have to master in order to win. And a little strategy session between a variety of the riders here as we prepare for moto number two. Chad Weenan got the win in moto one over Joel Hetrick and John Natale. And the riders very carefully surveying their gates to start all critical. Of course, there's Josh Upperman who's gotten the majority of the hole shots this year on the Baldwin Motorsports machine. Looks like he's gonna line up toward the inside of the start. Watch out for Howard Goodman there with the shaved head. He was the rider up front early in Moto 1 today. And we're hoping Nick DeNoble can bounce back after leading Moto number 1 and then running into some problems and was not unable to finish that. Let's go racing here in Moto 2. Well, a rocket out of the hole is Chad Wheaton on the 44. But look who sweeps around the outside. He's back. Nick DeNoble. Grabs another SSI decals hole shot award. So whatever problems they had with that machine in Moto 1, they've got it fixed in Moto 2. And a much better start in this one for Natale, who is up to second. Thomas Brown and Weenan, third and fourth. So Natale has the opportunity. He's looking for it. Look at Weenan getting bucked and bounced around in these whoops. A little bit of blood in the water here. For these guys to go after. Your championship points leader, and now Natale into the lead, and he's tripling downhill. And what happened to DeNoble? Apparently more bad luck has befallen him. Natale's not going to ask questions about that. He does not have time. He's got to deal with Thomas Brown, who is up to second. Brown, remember, was down on the ground in turn one of Moto One with Joe Bird, and now he's going for the lead against Natale with Weenan in third. Well, after third in Moto One, and Natale makes a mistake, nearly coughs up the lead to Brown, but he's still going to hold it. Third in the first Moto for the defending champ. He needs this one. Here comes Wien in through the whoops, challenging Brown for second. Brown able to hang tough. You know that Wien is always fast through those whoop sections. He's got to be excited when he gets to there. And if he has room to make a pass, that's where he's going to choose to make it. But right now, it's John Natale in the lead, and you don't need to tell the multi-time and defending series champ what to do. When he's in the number one spot, try to run away and hide. And if he can't, well, you're going to see him ride the widest Can-Am DS450 you've ever seen. He is not going to give up the lead easily today. Natale continues to lead them around. Weenan starting to go to work now on his uh, fellow Yamaha rider, Brown. Now going to run the right side of that whoop section and try to put it down on the inside. And look at Brown. He has closed back up on Natale. And Weenan has closed up on Brown. So the top three are wheel to wheel. Hetrick back and forth. Well, he needs to hope that these guys maybe slow each other up in a battle for the lead. Or maybe just tangle and take each other out. Stranger things have happened here. Both Yamahas trying an outside line to challenge Natale. Natale going to get back to the inside to cover it. No. Brown going to emerge with the lead. Well done for the Moto Experts. T. Brown racing man. And now Natale's got to try to get him back with Chad Wien and all over him. Great battle raging behind them with Upperman and Hetrick. But it's Thomas Brown out of Texas holding on to the number one spot. Did get a third at our last Moto in Maryland a few weeks ago. So he has been on the rise as well. But here comes Natale right back on him. And Natale would love to not only get the lead, but use Brown as a buffer to try to get away from Wienan and put some points between them in the championship. 
So we'll see whose strategy pays off best. You've got Whedon back there at third, sitting back, watching it. You've got Natalie attacking the leader, Brown. And Brown, well, he's going to take on all that pressure. Look at Whedon starting to find alternate lines, trying to figure out a way around Natalie. This is just a classic duel. And you know Whedon is going to be powered on by those home state fans. They want to see him make the move. But Natalie and Brown appear to actually be getting away a bit. Natalie keeps putting the press on. So much on the line. If Natalie can go 3-1 on the day, and Whedon goes 1-3, Natalie wins the overall. We will sort it out when we return. Racer TV is brought to you by Can-Am and by Amsoil. First rate battle is on here at Walnut, Illinois, and we've had a shakeup since we went to break. It's now a pair of Yamahas out front. Big shakeup in the championship as Chad Whedon has gotten around John Natale for second and is now going after Thomas Brown for the lead and somehow able to run it around the outside. Now Whedon has the momentum at the bottom of the jump, but he chooses to cross over from right to left go to the outside, and that allows Brown to hold on to the number one spot. Well, Brown definitely showing he can ride under tremendous pressure. Now, he is not in contention for the overall win today because he was seventh in Moto 1 after that first turn crash. But here comes Wienan challenging him again, and Natale not too far back in third. Unbelievable racing. Wienan's not giving up. He's got another drive around the outside, and it's going to put him on the inside the next corner, and finally he's able to take the lead. Well, he sat back there and waited, and late in the race here, making the attack. Ten laps down, and on time, I think we're going to get four more laps in, and Wienan is pouring it on, starting to get away. The bigger question is going to be, can Natale or Hedrick, who's in fourth now, make a run at Brown because that's the two points in the championship, the, distance, the difference between a second and a third. And the MotoWorks Can-Am team knows it. They don't want the Yamahas to go one, two. If they cannot stop Wienan on the day, you've got to at least stay as close as possible. So expect some good racing down the stretch, even if these last few laps might just be a victory tour for Illinois' favorite ATV pilot. And Chad Wienan through those whoops. That's where he makes his money. Wheeling away from the pack. Now, Wienan won the first two rounds of the series. Chammed his wrist at our last moto of the last round in Maryland. And that held him back a bit. And he was quickly able to reestablish the momentum here. And he really doesn't care about a perfect season or how many wins he gets. He's been there, done that. He's won plenty of races. The goal this year is the championship. And for that, you've got to be consistent. Minimize the damage on the bad days. Wienan has definitely proven, after a big injury last year, that he's gotten all of his speed back. Can he maintain this type of consistency all year long? If you're Natalie, Hetrick, Brown, you're hoping he can't, you get back in the championship race. So far, so good for Wienan. A little help from his fellow Yamaha rider, Brown. They're going to steal a bunch of points from the Can-Am boys today. Wait a minute, maybe not. Here comes Natalie with a last ditch effort. And they're both trying to run the outside line. It's so rough, dancing down those breaking bumps on the inside. Brown and Natalie going wide. And you saw they're actually closing back up on Wienan at times. We might have a battle for the win after all. Here goes Natalie around the outside. Brown's got it covered. Up to the top of this big table. Hetrick just doesn't quite have the pace late in this moto. It's going to come down to how hard can Natale push Brown. Can he push him all the way to the rear wheels of Wienan and then maybe get a mistake? Seen a couple of passes on the last lap so far this year. White flag is out. Will we see another here at Walnut? And Natale has taken second place. He has gotten around Brown. And that's why they call this guy the Iron Man. He just does not give up. Late in the races, when everyone's tired, he keeps digging. And you know he can see that 44 in front of him. He knows what he needs to do. Try to get to Wienan and mount a last-ditch effort. And he's closing the gap up big time. 
The last two laps, Natalia has been about a second quicker than Weenan. But time is up, and Weenan is just going to hang on and win. What a charge by Natalia at the line. And he gives the high sign to, or, or I'm not sure if that's a high sign, good race, or if he's bummed at what went down there between he and Brown. Weenan doesn't care. He's got the overall. But natalie has got to take some confidence about running these boys down late in the second moto, which just sets the stage for more great racing as this championship goes on. The fans here at Walnut got what they wanted. Chad Weenan has taken the overall win, and he does it with a 1-1 sweep. Hetrick third overall. He did collect the ATV Riders Fast Qualifier Award earlier today. Brown and Upperman round out the top five. Well, it was a great day of racing, and it went right down to the final laps. But Chad Weenan was able to maintain his lead to the end, and here's how he got it. Our Can-Am turning point of the race will take you through this pass for the number one spot. The 84 Brown leading most of the way in this one, but watch Weenan. It's a long way around around the outside. Doesn't seem like the way to go, but it will set him up for the inside of the next right-hander. Everyone wanted to go wide in this corner. Weenan started it on the inside, and from there, he was able to grab the lead. And while Natalia and Brown ran him hard to the end, they couldn't stop him. The only problems for Weenan on this day, can't get the champagne open here on the podium. For everyone at Racer TV, I'm Jason Wigand. Thanks for watching.